Hello, and welcome to part 9 of our series, Understanding Binary Options. This particular video, uh, titled um, Binary Options versus Option Trading, tries to contrast the concepts of binary option trading, which has been the focus of our discussion thus far, with respect to the uh, concept of option trading. And the reason I made this video is because I received a lot of personal messages from uh, other YouTube viewers and subscribers of uh, our series that were confused between the differences between option trading, which is offered by regular stockbrokers, and binary option trading, which is offered by a number of different uh, independent trading platforms. And uh, hopefully this video is going to clarify the differences between these two concepts. So let's begin as we always do by uh, detailing what binary option trading essentially is. Basically, we pick a commodity or currency or stock or index, and each of these has a current value at any given point in time, right before we're ready to make our trade. Now, binary option trading relies on our ability to predict what that value of that asset or commodity or currency or stock or index is going to be sometime in the future. We call if we think that the value of that asset is going to go up, and we put if we think the value of the asset is going to go down. Now, being right earns us a profit. It earns us a profit in terms of the percentage of what we invested, but being wrong means we lose all of what we put in. Uh, moving on to option trading, let's start by outlining, uh, underlying, um, sorry, underscoring the similarities between binary option trading and option trading. Um, essentially, we start by uh, doing the exact same thing. We pick a commodity or currency or stock or index. It has a current value right now. And again, option trading relies on our ability to predict what the value of that asset is going to be sometime in the future. Uh, moving on to the differences, option trading essentially entails the right but not the obligation. And I'll repeat that just to emphasize that it is the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell the asset at a specified price. And uh, in terms of the jargon, this is referred to as the strike price um, on or before a specified date. That's the time limit. Essentially, what we're paying for here is the right to buy or sell. The right to sell is referred to as a put option and the right to buy is referred to as a call option. Um, note that there is actual ownership of the asset and when I say actual ownership of the asset I mean indirect ownership of the asset because what we're purchasing here is the right to buy or sell that asset and the underlying idea behind option trading is that the worst loss one can incur is whatever one paid for the right to buy or sell at the specified price. And uh, for those of us who, who don't quite get this at the first read, we're going to go into an example which will hopefully explain exactly what this means. So um, going on to an example in option trading, let's say we want to purchase an asset X, whatever the asset may be, let's just refer to it as X, and it has a current value of Y. Now we don't actually have Y, we're a little short, but we know that in six months we'll have that amount Y. Um, to make it clear, in six months we will have what the current value of Y is. So what we do right now, instead of purchasing X, instead, because we don't have the money right now, instead of purchasing X, we purchase the right to purchase X in six months at its current value. So let's say in six months the current value is something different, hypothetically higher. What we're buying right now is not X. We're buying the right to buy X in six months at whatever the current value is. In order to make this happen, it's not a free thing. So in order to make this happen, we pay a certain amount. Uh, again, for the sake of our example, let's say we pay $1,000. Now, why would we do this? When would this help? Let's say in six months, the value of X increases. Not just increases, but it skyrockets. Let's say it's three times what it is right now. We would still be able to purchase it for Y. And again, Y is the value right now, not what the value is going to be in three months. And if it's triple, in six months, I'm sorry. And if it's triple, it won't be Y in the in six months. It will be three times Y. But what we did is we purchased the right to purchase 
asset x in six months, not at the value that it's going to be in six months, which is 3y, but in terms of the current value right now, which is just y. Now, as long as the difference in value is greater than what we paid for this right, in the sake of our example, $1,000, we have made a smart move, which is going to result in a profit. So let's say the current value is y. Um, let's say y turns out to be $10,000. But in six months, the value is going to be $30,000. So if we don't buy X right now, and we want to buy X in six months, it's going to be $30,000. But what we did right now is, because we didn't have $10,000 on hand, we didn't buy X right now, but we purchased the right to buy X at the current value in six months. Therefore, what we paid for this right is $1,000. So we already invested $1,000, and in six months, we have the right amount. So what we pay in six months for X is $10,000, not the, the value in six months, $30,000. We don't pay $30,000. We pay $10,000, and um, the reason we're paying $10,000 is because we forked um, $1,000 ahead of time. Therefore, the total amount we invested is 10,000 plus 1,000, 11,000 um, dollars to buy the asset in six months at its current value. Um, and given the fact that in the sake in, in our example, the value in the future, the value in six months is going to be thirty thousand dollars, we don't end up paying thirty thousand dollars. We end up paying just eleven thousand dollars. And that eleven thousand is the ten thousand, the current value, plus one thousand, what we pay for the right to buy at the current value. And instead of paying um, thirty thousand, we end up paying eleven thousand, and we save ourselves nineteen thousand dollars. And that's the principle behind um, option trading. Note that there is actual ownership um, here of the asset. If it's not direct ownership of the asset, it's indirect ownership of the asset in terms of the fact that we have the right to buy or sell the asset. And note that for our example, we 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 focused in terms of buying, but let's say we were the seller right here. Let's say we own the asset, and uh, what we're paying money for is the right to sell the asset at its current price. But in six months, the asset, instead of its value going up, what happens is the asset value falls. It, fall, it falls to one-third th one of what its current value is. However, we're not affected by that. We're not affected by the fact that the value actually fell in six months because what we purchased is the right to sell the value uh, to sell the asset, I'm sorry, to sell the asset in six months, um, but not at the value that is going to be in six months, but rather its current value. Um, and let's say again that we purchased this right at the price of $1,000. As long as the difference between the value in six months um, and the value right now, as long as that difference is going to be more than six or more than $1,000, we, we still ended up making a better deal because if we had just sold the asset in six months at whatever its value is going to be then, since the value dropped, we would have incurred a loss and not just a, not just any loss, um, a loss of a uh, a loss uh, because the value is going to be one third of what it was, a very significant loss. In this scenario, purchasing the right to buy or sell the asset makes sense. So I realize that um, there's been a lot of discussion thus far. And um, it makes probably makes more sense in the interest of the video. It'll make it more clear to the, to the viewer or reader of this video um, to directly contrast the differences between binary option trading and option trading. And that's precisely what we're going to do. Um, in the case of binary option trading, note that there is no real ownership of anything. We never really own an asset. Whereas in the case of option trading, we indirectly own the asset in the sense that we own the right to buy or sell that asset. Um, and again, this is not in the case of option trading, because in the case of option trading, um, bi I'm sorry, binary option trading, binary option trading sites um, serve as a layer of abstraction between the buyer and the sell a buyer or seller, and the actual asset. In the case of binary option trading, let's say we pick something like gold. We're never really buying or selling gold. What we're doing is buying or selling. Um, or to, to put it in uh, option binary option trading lingo, we're putting or calling with respect to the asset. But what we're really doing is we're we're going based on the price that is declared by the option trading website. 
and I go into uh, the details of this with respect to um, one of our videos of binary option experiments and I'll put a link to this um, in this video um, but binary option trading websites essentially they can display information pertaining to whatever they feel is um, an accurate representation of the current value in terms of whatever is going to get them money um, I stated that uh, rather poorly so let me restate that uh, binary option trading websites um, can display a can misrepresent the value of uh, an asset um, whenever it suits their purpose um, what they display is the is the value that they're willing to buy or sell that asset for it may not correspond to what the value of that asset may actually be and again I, I go into the details of this um, when I um, perform one of the experiments with respect to binary option trading websites and I'll put a link to this but suffice it to say that binary option trading websites serve as um, middlemen between um, us as buyers and sellers and the actual as asset whenever we go through binary option websites whenever we put trades on an asset like gold we're never really buying or selling gold what we're doing is we're we're dealing specifically just with the binary option trading website if we incur losses our money goes to the as to the website and if we make money we make money off of the website but we really have nothing to do with the actual asset whereas in the case of option trading usually and i say usually because um, it may vary from site to site but in the case of option trading, we actually have rights with respect to the asset. Um, and in terms of the losses that we incur, there's differences here too. In the case of binary option trading, and again, we delve into this um, in all of our videos, but in the case of op binary option trading, we lose all of what we put in if we're wrong. Um, when we're right, we make, a, we make a profit in terms of the percentage of what we put in, but when we're wrong, we lose all of what we put in. But in the case of um, just regular option trading, let's say we're absolutely wrong. What the amount that we lose is the right is whatever we paid for the right to make um, that option trade in the future. We don't lose any other amount because we've already purchased the right um, to buy or sell the asset at whatever value we saw fit. And therefore, the worst thing that we can do is lose the amount that we paid for that right. And it's very important to point this out. Um, there's also potential differences in terms of regulations. I believe, and I need to state this in print as well as speak it out, I believe, um, because I haven't done enough research in terms of the regulatory um, restrictions on option trading with respect to binary option trading, but I believe that option trading is regulated um, with respect to normal trades. In other sense, in, in other words, there's um, the involvement of the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, and I think they're the ones that regulate option trading just as they would regulate normal uh, stock trades. But with respect to option, binary option trading, I'm sorry, with respect to binary option trading, I believe um, this is regulated by gambling uh, commissions. And we talk, uh, we touch upon this briefly in our other videos. Again, um, it's a binary options experiments three, uh, that video, and I'll provide a link to it. But I think that the regulations in terms of binary options are done by the gambling uh, by uh, gambling associations, and this primarily has to do with the fact that binary option trading, in essence, is has much more in common with gambling than it does with actual stock trading. So that just about summarizes our current video. Um, what we did is we talked about uh, binary option trading and we contrasted it with the concepts of option trading and we realize that there's uh, significant differences between the two um, forms of trading in the case of binary option trading where um, where really it's it's not really about the asset as much as it is about the um, relationship we have with the um, binary option trading platform or website whereas in the case of option trading even if we don't have a direct connection with the asset that we're buying or selling we have an indirect connection with that asset uh, with respect to our uh, our purchase of the right to buy or sell that asset at a specified price within a specified time so hopefully this helps uh, clarify the differences between binary option trading and option trading if you um, have any comments good or bad please feel free to post and um, I think feedback is is really valuable to me to improve the quality of videos 
So reach out to me however you feel best, whether you want to leave a personal message or you want to um, leave a comment um, in case you think it will be beneficial for other readers. Um, and uh, I guess that concludes this video in its entirety. Um, thank you for um, watching this video and um, good luck uh, trading out there. And I guess I'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks. Good night.